Jennifer Afar, who is a registered dental hygienist. Ms. Jennifer, are you there? Give me one moment. All right, so hello everybody. I have a PowerPoint for you guys. I just wanna make sure everybody can see it. Do you guys see a PowerPoint? Yes. All right, hello everybody. My name is Jennifer Afari. I am a registered dental hygienist from DC. Well, I'm not from DC, I'm from Pennsylvania, but I currently work and reside in DC. Um, so what to expect at the dentist? Um, I'm just here to try to flatten the curve of misinformation that's uh, been provided and everything going on with COVID, just trying to give patients an understanding of what to expect when they go to the dentist. All right, so everybody has their New Year's resolutions, the New Year, New Me, um, and it's important for patients to uh, schedule all their health and wellness visits at the beginning of the year, um, just because at this time, a lot of healthcare professionals do see an influx of patients trying to schedule their appointments, um, trying to get in, so it's important to start the year off to see your um, PCP, your um, dentist, Anything, any routine schedules for any type of medical reasons need to be scheduled at the beginning of the year. Um, especially if you haven't seen your healthcare provider in 2021. A lot of patients have not seen anybody regarding their health 2022 or 2021. Um, and patients must go see the dentist every six months. It is imperative that you go see your um, local dentist, your family practice dentist every six months to maintain that healthy uh, six month recare. Um, so just any changes that you may expect or changes to your dental office that you should expect to see is first, most offices that I have been to since COVID, um, they all have COVID healthcare um, screenings and questionnaires. Um, upon arrival, the COVID protocol is to take a temperature check. So a lot of our um, dental offices are taking temperature checks upon arrival. So that's what you can expect. Um, and then mandatory face coverings. So as soon as you enter the building or the office, you should have a face covering um, all the way up until you are seated in the um, room or operatory. Um, once you're seated in your room or operatory, your um, dental care provider will either go over your health history and at that time, they'll give you a pre-procedural rinse or pre-operative rinse. And so what that is, is just like a diluted solution of hydrogen peroxide, which um, will help prevent the spread of infectious aerosols. Um, so everything that we're doing and we're implementing in the dental offices is just to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and just any other type of um, viruses that can be spread throughout like aerosols in the air. Um, okay, so another change that you may notice or differences 
um, prior to COVID-19 COVID um, COVID would be your dental provider. So your dental provider, you're going to see them covered. It's a lot of PPE, which is personal protective gear. Um, so you're going to see instead of regular face masks, you're going to see N95s. So you're going to see face shields. You're going to see gloves, see, um, gowns. You're also going to see uh, shoe covers, maybe head covers. So it's just uh, precautions to keep us safe and then to keep you safe as a patient as well. Um, and then the tools, um, a lot of offices, I know I've worked at several different offices with COVID and some of them don't even allow their, um, their hygienists to use any powered instruments. They would prefer that you use um, just hand instruments, instruments that won't produce a lot of aerosols, um, which in turn helps keep us safe and then the patient safe as well. Um, and then just keeping up different safety measures and protocols. Um, a lot of offices, as soon as you walk in, they'll ask you to go and wash your hands. Like that's just a safety measure that has been put in place. Um, so, and everything again, is just to keep everybody safe. Um, COVID has definitely affected healthcare um, across the board. Um, a lot of people have faced unemployment due to, the, due to the pandemic. And then that in turn, you know, has caused people to lose insurance. So there is definitely a crisis and there are different ways that patients can go about trying to still seek healthcare and be able to afford it. Um, and so some of the different ways um, that a lot of, uh, <laughs> A lot of the different ways patients can go about getting uh, and receiving healthcare is to call your family dentist. If you've been going to a dentist for a very long time, give them a call and say, hey, like what programs do you guys have implemented right now that can help patients that no longer have that health insurance that we currently have or that dental insurance that we've had? And some dentists, you know, they have different programs where um, they can help their patients out or different payment plans that they have set in place due to COVID-19 and just other, um, other reasons to not have insurance right now. Um, there's different things like care credit uh, that you can go on. There's also the option to go to dental schools. A lot of dental schools offer um, discounted rates on dental, um, any type of dental coverage that you need. Um, so that's also one thing to look at if you can afford to go to a dentist. Um, and then there's other discounted dental programs that you can search online um, if you really just want to get in to get a cleaning. So a lot of friends and family that I have talked to over the years just feel like to the dentist, um, my teeth don't hurt, so I don't have any cavities. And we, when you come in for a dentist appointment, we check a lot more than just for cavities. We're checking, we're giving you oral cancer screenings. Um, we're going over your overall health history. We're taking your blood pressure. Um, I've had patients that have come in and they need procedures done and I take their blood pressure. I can't even provide them with care because their blood pressure is they need to go see their um, primary care provider or they need to go see seek assistance at the hospital because their blood pressure is at a level that it should not be at. So there is a lot that goes into your dental visit. And I always say that the mouth is the gateway to the body. That's the gateway to your health. So that's something that is imperative that you go every six months, even if you are feeling fine, even if you do think you're healthy, even if you do feel like your oral um, home care routine is adequate, you still need to go to the dentist every six months. Um, the DMV area in general is a high risk carries population. Um, and that's just because of the lack of education that is provided for oral hygiene, um, poor diet, um, low fluoride and genetics. So to touch on the lack of education, there isn't as many community programs as there should be right now or currently going on to just provide 
students and um, students that are in grades K through 12, the information needed to maintain a good oral hygiene regimen. Um, and so community-based programs are just definitely needed right now. And, and we don't really have that. We don't have many outlets where students can go and receive dental care. There used to be a time when students could get their cleanings and things like that at school. And now that students are now staying home due to COVID, they don't have that anymore. Um, so they, they can't go and get the dental care that's needed at schools because they are now, you know, quarantining and staying at home to do uh, virtual school. Um, another reason for us being a high risk population in this area is just poor diet. Um, we're seeing now that students are staying home, they're snacking more. And just in general, not even just students, just people that are working from home, you're snacking throughout the day, uh, which will cause you to be at a higher risk for caries. And caries are cavities. So the more you snack throughout the day, the higher risk that you are to have cavities. Um, also low, low fluoride, there's a very low fluoridation in this area. And then also a lot of people have switched over to natural toothpaste and that's fine. But if the natural toothpaste does not have fluoride in it, it's not um, helping the fight against cavities, which is a, a huge thing. So my thing is if you are gonna use a natural toothpaste, that's fine and well, but make sure that you're rinsing with a fluoridated uh, mouth rinse or something. You need that type, you need that fluoride in your um, home care regimen to help prevent cavities. Let's see, so like I said earlier, communities and school-based oral health education um, has definitely been impacted by COVID-19. Not having these programs heavily affects uh, the Medicaid population and students who were able to be seen at school. So in all, it's definitely safe to go to the dentist. Um, I would advise everybody that has not been seen, or even if you have been seen, um, if it's been this at the six month mark, please, please, please go see your dental care providers, ask them what programs and what um, conditions they have in place against COVID-19 to keep yourself safe um, and make your regular, regular scheduled cleanings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate you bringing the, the COVID perspective to this. I think many of us, myself included, was terrified at the idea of going to the dentist yeah. last year and then finally realizing, okay, I can't let a lot of time pass um, for this. What would you say, and I don't know if you can answer this question, but I'm going to try anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, <laughs> what would you say is um, one of the reasons or a reason that people who look like us don't go to the dentist? What's, what's the issue there? Um, well, number one would be cost. Going to the dentist is not cheap. It's not um, cheap to be able to go to the dentist, um, especially if you don't maintain a, a good or a hygiene um, care regimen at home. Um, that could just lead to costly things. So if I'm doing everything I need to do at home and I could just go every six months, the cost would be lower. But if I'm neglecting my teeth and then I go into the dentist and now they tell me I have six cavities and I need a root canal and then you also need a crown, these things can add up and it just shies a lot of people away from going to the dentist. So. I would agree. I would I would also venture, this, venture to say here. I mean, when yeah. people go to the dentist, Unfortunately, some of us go only because we're in pain. So I'm glad you address why should I go if my teeth don't hurt? Exactly. Why should I go if my teeth look white enough? Yeah. So, so thank you so much. In dental hygiene, we focus on preventative dentistry. That is our main goal to prevent anything that can happen in the future, whether that's decay or demineralization, anything. We try to prevent that in office. Um, so coming to us every six months and then us being able to give you that education on what you need to keep your teeth healthy. Um, that's, that's our main goal. So. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Jennifer Afar, registered dental hygienist.